but welcome back. Today we're going to be using noise. Now when we think of noise, we probably think of sort of grainy romantic pictures, but noise can also be used for effects, and I'm going to show you today a couple of uh, special effects. One is using noise to create rain in pictures, and the other one, which is probably a little bit something a little bit more obscure, but it's still worth knowing, and that is how to use noise to add a stubble to a model, and you can also use it to create fur and also uh, beards as well. So uh, we'll go straight into uh, Photoshop CS3 and I'll show you the uh, tutorials. Right, so let me just get rid of this existing layer. We're going to first start off by adding a new empty layer, like so. We're going to get, um, we're going to click on the eyedropper tool and make sure we've got a mid grey somewhere around there. It's not to be exact, as long as it's fairly neutral. And then we're going to get the brush tool. And we want quite a soft brush. Now, what we're going to produce uh, here, I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, bit, bit of hardness, only about uh, sort of ten percent. Uh, what we're going to create here is the um, is basically the, the hair for the stubble. Now, we don't have to be exact with this, but uh, and if if anything, you want to perhaps be over zealous. Is that the right word? I don't know. But to overdo it, if anything, and then we can always uh, mask it back later. So we're just going to start off by drawing some grey where his facial stubble would normally be on a guy, which is around here. And as I said, don't have to be too exact. I'm going to draw some around this area along his chin. Okay. Maybe come down here a bit and then up something like that. Okay, don't worry, I know it looks like the kids kids have drawn it, but it um, doesn't matter at this stage. We just want to get a rough shape of where the stubble would normally be on uh, on the guy's face. Something like that. Okay, we can bring this up along the jawline and back up. Now with this image, it's got very soft focus as it goes towards the back of the ear there. So we're going to have to perhaps fade that in. But for now, I'm just going to concentrate on getting the stubble in the, roughly the right areas, like so. So following my own advice, I've actually added a little bit more grey towards his lip, which at the moment isn't all that natural, but we can mask that back later on. Next thing I'm going to do is to convert this layer to a smart object, because we're going to add some filter settings to this layer, and I want to remain as, as flexible as possible to go back in and change the settings if needed. So we're going to right-click, convert to smart object. We're going to go to filter, noise, add noise, and we want to add, um, I think it depends on how long the the effect you want. If you want stubble or maybe making longer hair, it will, it will basically um, guide you to how much uh, noise you want to add to this layer. Now, I only want to create some stubble. So I'm going to sort of adjust this to around 28 pixels. If you wanted anything longer, you would extend the amount on this layer uh, to, to add more noise. That would lengthen these kind of strands of hair that we're creating. So 28%, click OK. And remember, we're using a smart object layer here, so we can go back and adjust these if we need to. The next thing we need to do is to add um, a radial blur. So to do that, we're going to get the elliptical marquee tool. We're going to hold down the Alt or the Option key, and we want to drag out from the center here, so something like this, and make sure we get all the beard. Okay, now we can go to Filter, Blur, Radial Blur, and uh, with this one, we want to make sure that we're on, we're on the zoom setting. And again, we don't want a high setting for this, at the moment it's on 3, let's extend that to about 5 or maybe even six, we can always come back and drop it down again and click OK. OK, Command or Control D to deselect our selection once that's finished rendering. And you can see now that's kind of blurred uh, the, the effect on his face. The third thing we need to do to make this really kick in um, is to change the blending mode to hard light. OK, and that's going to get rid of the grey. And you can see now the effect here's before his after has really come in and added that facial hair. But of course we're not finished quite yet. So there's before, there's after. You can see now that's really come on 
quite a treat but it's a little bit too uh too defined at the moment so we need to kind of uh, soften it up a little bit so to do that um we also just should point out before we move on if you find that actually you wanted a bit more uh, noise you can always come back in here uh, and, uh, and and do that and see what it looks like so you can just add a little bit more should you wish let's just try that you should click okay it's under 65 percent now and see what that looks like and that's the beauty of these smart objects is that we can uh, these smart filters we can adjust them and of course uh, if that's too much which it maybe is we can always come back and just drop that down so let's leave it on let's leave it on about 50 50 percent and see what that looks like and on top of that we can now start to mask it back and maybe just uh, drop the effect from certain areas and the reason I said earlier about maybe adding too much um, I'll just add this layer mask a second so just go down here add layer mask the reason I said about adding too much we can always come in and take it away so for instance I'm gonna get a brush now we're gonna need to paint with black remember white reveals black conceals so by painting with a black on the mask we're going to hide the effect we can now come in and now remember I'm using a, a pressure sensitive tablet and pen but you can drop the opacity and stuff up here if you need to I'm just going to gently brush away some of the effect around this area because you wouldn't really have hair not that I know of anyway right up in those areas so just to shape it and what you can do now is just come in and just fade this effect back in areas where you don't want it to too distinct and I said with this image it fades off because of the aperture I use very wide aperture it's faded off so I want to knock back that back a little bit around here and also this side so that's the beauty of using these layer masks is you can just drop the effect away as you will okay and finally of course you can also uh, change the opacity of the effect find it's a bit too much so there we have it there's before and there's after so a very quick and easy way to add stubble and a bit more macho-ness if that's the right word to your subject and of course if you wanted a stronger effect you can come in and maybe darken this down we can almost always as well press command or control J and that will duplicate the layer and now you can really see that um, kicking in and maybe have a play around with the blending modes uh, maybe try one in multiply and drop down see if that does anything for you and that's uh, that's that's really darkened it up a little bit more but maybe a little bit overkill but what I'm saying is, you know, you don't have to stop there. If you want, uh, want to add a complete beard or a nice, uh, nice moustache to do uh, to your subject, that's all possible by using this effect. Now, in this image, uh, which was shot in Paris quite a few years ago, um, I thought we could use this to as a sample to try and add some rain to the picture. And we're going to use a very similar technique to the last image, um, using noise again. Um, but we're going to go about it in a slightly different way. We're going to go up here to the Layers uh, panel, and we're going to add a new layer. And this brings up this dialog box, which you might be, might be familiar with. I'm going to put name this one noise in the name box we're gonna use the mode of hard light again now I should explain I didn't really explain in the last section what hard light does hard light will basically um, if we're working with a with a with a gray layer which we will be we're gonna fill a layer with gray anything in that layer that is lighter than 50% will get lightened anything darker than that 50% will get darkened so it acts like a screen and a multiply in one layer that's how I think about it so uh, that's the idea of it so um, in here we're gonna put hard light on this box below we're gonna put tick it and it says fill the hard light neutral color of 50% gray what that basically means is it's gonna fill the layer that we create with a 50% gray and click OK now as last time I'd recommend right clicking and convert to smart object because that's going to help us and we're simply then now going to go to filter noise and add noise again now I can't tell you exactly how much again but I would say it's very similar to last time maybe let's go for around 50% on that we can always come back and tweak it and uh, you can see that it looks like it's been snowing there 
next thing we need to do is de- to kind of despeckle this a little bit and make it like it's the rain is falling is we're going to go to filter blur again but this time we're going to go to motion blur and uh, you can see from this dialog box um, depending on the distance you set here will be to how kind of hard and streaky the rain is now we don't want it too too uh, too harsh and too streaked otherwise it's going to look unrealistic and I reckon somewhere in between maybe 15 and 23 somewhere around there um, maybe even 27 let's give it 27 again it's a smart object we can come back in it's a smart filter sorry we can come back in and readjust that but that looks pretty good and already you can see that's kind of um, that's kind of uh, working already but it's too it's, it's too uniform okay when you're backlit in, backlit in a scene like this with rain falling, you'll normally find that the, the rain will show up in certain areas better than others. Now, from experience, um, I believe, if I'm not I'm mistaken, that with, with this sort of image here, the rain is going to show up better in the darker areas. Okay, that makes kind of makes sense. So we want to kind of randomize this a little bit. And we can do that by and now adding a layer mask. So we go down here and add layer mask okay and we can simply come in get a brush again with black remember white reveals black conceals so painting with black on the mask will conceal the effect and we want to come in and kind of just kind of randomly paint away some of the areas okay because at the moment it still looks fairly fake especially around these edges and just randomize it a little bit and as I said I would, I'm going to attack more the highlights than I am any other area like so so this is where we are at the moment here's before okay here's after so you can see that rain's really kind of kicking in now you might want to um, come in and maybe blur this with a normal bit of Gaussian blur because I just feel it's still a little bit too obvious and I think adding a bit of blur may well help that so we're going to go to filter blur Gaussian blur and I really only want uh, maybe a pixel maybe even half a pixel and I think yeah about half a pixel just to take the edge off the sharpness of the picture okay so here's before here's after uh, and uh, you can see that's uh, really added something to it I think I'd still need to go in and I still have a little more of a play around with this before I'm fully happy with it because I still think there's certain areas that it still looks a little bit too fake but you start to get the idea and remember you can come back in here and on the um, on the motion blur you can come in and you can have a little play around with these settings again you might decide well, actually now I've done that. I actually want it a bit stronger, or you may want to tr drop it back a little bit. If you drop it back too look, too much, okay. If you start to look at this picture now, it almost starts to look a little bit more like sleet, okay. And I think there's a hint there for you that if you want to make snow, this should be your first port of call. Is uh, doing this very same technique, okay? Because that's looking a little bit more soft, like it's falling slowly. Uh, certainly too too slowly for it to be rain, in my opinion. So I'm just going to bring this up again. So using smart filters is the way forward because that's going to save you a lot of time just going back in and just having to play around with these settings like so so there you go so there's another little tip i hope you found this uh, tutorial of interest i'm sure you can go in and start to uh, have a play around with this and even expand on the tools here there's a lot more to explore maybe look at other blending modes something you know might uh, might help you uh, create a different effect so get in have a play around until the next video thanks for watching catch you soon cheers